I am senior editor Roberto Baldwin, and I am joined on stage with Jada Tapley, VP of Advanced Engineering at Aptiv. How are you doing, Jada? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Now, I think a lot of people who, even people who are really into cars, might not know Aptiv or what it was uh, called previously Delphi. What, can you kind of fill us in on, on, on what Aptiv does? Yes. So. Um, Aptiv is a global technology company. We focus on developing and delivering safer, greener, more connected solutions that enable the future of mobility. And that's mobility that we see on the streets in Vegas today with our uh, partnership that we have with Lyft's ride hailing platform to bring self-driving vehicles and in an, um, ride hailing service to the streets of Las Vegas for consumers. Cool. Now, today we're gonna talk about the future of autonomous driving and how important tier one suppliers. Now, a lot of people believe that if, you know, Automaker X has an autonomous solution, they've created it from top to bottom, soup to nuts, mm -hmm. they've done the whole thing. When in reality, almost, not even almost, all automakers partner with tier one suppliers for everything, for everything from the drivetrain to, and, and how does Aptiv fit into that sort of uh, supply chain for the autonomous world? Um, so we do have a soup to nuts approach. We have a, <laughs> but we also can piecemeal that out. So you're exactly right. Um, OEMs all have a different approach. Some want to own more, some want to own less. And that's especially true when we think about autonomous driving. Um, OEMs are trying to figure out what are the key differentiators in this space? What do they need to own and what do they need to um, go to someone else and partner with to get? And that's one of the things that we really excel with at Aptiv. Not only do we have a fully autonomous platform that we are developing in partnership with Mobileye and others to uh, deliver directly to OEMs that they can then use, but at the same time, that platform is comprised of active safety technology. It's comprised of supercomputers, tons of software, um, high-speed data transmission, and all of those items can then be pulled by OEMs that still want to own maybe one piece of it. And let's talk a little bit about the, the, um, the sort of transition when it comes to automobiles yeah. from hardware. Automobiles are just hardware, and then maybe it's the computer that, that took care of your carburetor and maybe your, your, your valves and, and how it was firing to becoming just almost these supercomputers. Mm -hmm. And the, the soft, and that means there's a ton of software that yes. has to be built for that. So this, this topic is near and dear to my heart. Um, I, I've been with Apti, formerly Delphi. We, we um, had a spinoff in, uh, in uh, we announced it last year. We spun on no, uh, December the 5th and now we are active and we're laser focused on delivering these mobility solutions and they start and they end with software. So I started as a software engineer several years ago uh, while I was an undergrad at Purdue and software became uh, something that I will always love, always be passionate about. So when we think about this shift, it's incredibly exciting because in the past, the value of the car was derived from hardware and mechanical based components. But now, if you pop the hood, if you peel back the skin, what you see is software capability. So the value has shifted. One of the great examples I love to use. Um, so in an infotainment system is often responsible for producing the audio in the vehicle, right? Well, whenever we turn on a turn signal, we hear what we call a click clack. That's the sound it makes. Well, the, uh, in the past, that sound was produced by a relay, a, a manual relay that flipped, and that was the sound it made, so we're all used to it. So one of my favorite examples of this shift towards software is that we have a WAV file that makes the sound of a relay that is embedded in a microprocessor that the infotainment system then plays over the sound system of the vehicle. And that's just the beginning. Software started with infotainment, it moved into active safety, and then you have the ultimate application of autonomous driving. So this shift means that having a deep foundation in software capability is incredibly important. So at Aptiv, we have 6,000 engineers around the world that are all focused on developing and delivering software-enabled solutions. 
And so um, not only do we develop the software, but we recognize we need those supercomputers you talked about mm -hmm. in order to run it. The more software you have, the more horsepower you have. Mm -hmm. So we also developed supercomputers for the cars. So we had um, the, the world's first supercomputer in the active safety space with the Audi A8. And we also had the world's first supercomputer in the cockpit for the Ferrari. And both of those are on the road today. And at our pavilion this year, we're actually highlighting the next generation of that technology that takes that, um, the need that we have to have for autonomous driving. Talk a little bit, because there is the need. There's the need for autonomous driving, and the need is being driven by the, the not just the technology, but consumers are starting to realize just, oh, I, you know, I don't have to drive to work, which is the worst drive of the day. Right. I don't, you know, I don't, or I, I, I can, the car can help me drive to work. And so the consumers are seeing that, the OEMs are seeing that. So I'm assuming that, that ramp up in speed, like how has that changed from, you know, from the Delph, back when it was Delphi, yeah. I mean, it just feels like it's going to be exponential, that sort of like faster, faster, faster. Fast, absolutely, and I think it feels like that the pace of change is unprecedented. Everyone's moving so fast. It's a sprint, but it's a 26 mile sprint, mm -hmm. and everyone is sprinting as quickly as we can, um, and and we we understand why. So. I get the question a lot of times, why do we need an automated ride hailing service, right? Mm -hmm. um, and one of the great examples to answer that question, why, is the city of Boston, beautiful city. They have a pretty extensive uh, mass transit system. And when it was designed, it was designed in a hub and spoke type platform. So you have like a center, and then you have all these spokes that go out to the various neighborhoods. Well, you can imagine it worked really, really well when it was designed, but as the city grows, urbanization, you have more people moving into cities, those neighborhoods expand. What that means now is people have to get from their point of origin, their home, to mass transit. And that's a challenge, and that forces them to own a vehicle. That's the first mile. Mm -hmm. That's a problem that we're trying to solve. And then you got the last mile problem, and that's when they get to that spoke how do they get from there to their final destination, to a business meeting, let's say? That's the last mile. So these first mile, last mile challenges um, are really accelerating the adoption of autonomous solutions, especially what we call AMOD, which is Automated Mobility On Demand. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing, and that's what we're um, highlighting here in the streets of Vegas this week, is a first mile, last mile solution, a point-to-point -point service in an automated vehicle that solves those problems. And that's why we're seeing that acceleration. But how, how it, as the market has changed, like it seems everyone's moving faster. Yes. And Delphi, you seem to be just, is, how difficult is, is it to be sort of like, just, like you, you almost seem to have to be like one step ahead at all times, or a half step, or if you're lucky, two steps. Two steps, yeah, well, we work very, very hard on our technology. We identify the right partners um, and develop those relationships so we can create an, an autonomous application that meets the, the problems mm -hmm. that, that we're seeing in the world today. Um, and I think that's really exemplified in what we're doing here on the streets of Las Vegas. So starting on Tuesday, we partnered with Lyft, leveraging their ride hailing platform so that consumers can go to uh, the, nor the uh, gold lot over there pull up their standardized Lyft app and request one of Aptiv's self-driving vehicles. So we have the opportunity here to be able to uh, provide consumers their very first ride in an autonomous vehicle. And that's, it, it's a humbling experience, to be honest, for me, to be able to see the future and, and see people experience that future for the very first time. And, we feel that we are best positioned to do this, and, and we are incredibly proud that we were the ones to be able to bring this to consumers here this week. And one of the things, I know you had an opportunity to ride in our vehicle um, last over Sunday, right? Yes. Yes. Um, and there's a couple things that we really want to highlight about that ride, and one was the smoothness. We've worked very, very hard to create a more human-like ride over the past year. We've um, worked on the throttle control, the braking control, the steering, all focused on making a very remarkably unremarkable ride. 
And that's what we're looking for. We want people to get in the back seat of the car and not realize the car is driving itself. And that's what we accomplished this year. And that's not an easy thing to do.